Now, as a specific case, let's take the special case of a linear polynomial. In order to find the zeros of the linear polynomial, we have always identified that a linear polynomial has only one zero. Let's try to investigate the linear polynomial with an example problem. When coming to the linear polynomial, And with zeros, let's try to investigate on the zeros of a linear polynomial. For example, I take the linear polynomial p of x is 4x minus 8 or 4x plus 8. And I want to find the zero of this linear polynomial which has degree equal to 1. So in this case, what I do is in order to find the zeros of this polynomial for zeros of p of x, the condition is p of x equal to 0. We know that as the basic definition. So for zeros of this, this equals 0, must be equal to 0. And then p of x indirectly out here is 4x plus 8 which is equal to 0 and 4x plus 8 equal to 0 implies minus 4. So I get this to be minus 2. Therefore the 0 of this linear polynomial is minus 2. So this is the 0 as how we identify the zero of the linear polynomial. But interestingly, I also note a very important property here that for every linear polynomial, there is only one zero, is how we conclude. So let's make the overall outcome which says that every linear polynomial has one and only one zero is how we come through the learning outcome is how we make the learning outcome which says every linear polynomial has one and only one zero it cannot have two zeros a quadratic polynomial may have two zeros or at the most may have two zeros or less than two a cubic polynomial has at the most three zeros or less than three. It cannot have four zeros. A quartic polynomial cannot have five zeros, but at the most can have four zeros. A quintic polynomial can at the most have five zeros, but not more than five. Is how we make the learning outcome through this investigation. Next, we are going to enter into the concept of understanding remainder theorem through the definition of polynomials and the various properties of polynomials. How does polynomials lead to understanding remainder theorem? But before we understand the remainder theorem which plays a very vital role in the branch of polynomials, let's see how the divisibility concept is essential to understand the remainder theorem. We need to understand the divisibility concept in brief before we try to enter into the theorem called the remainder theorem, the most significant theorem in polynomials. Divisibility. Let's try to understand the divisibility properties by taking a very simple example. For example, I have a number 5 divided by 3. I would like to divide a number 5 with 3. So here I understand that the number which is being divided by is called dividend. The term which I give for a number which is being divided by the other number is the dividend and the number which acts in the division is the divisor. So this plays a role in dividing because 3 gets divided 
it is called the divisor. Now when the number is divided, we have learned in the lower classes, the method of division is through this. Wherein 5 divided by 3 is written out here and then 3 ones are 3 which on subtraction gives me 5 minus 3 which is 2. This cannot be further simplified because this number is less than this. So we halt it here and we call this as remainder. And this is given by a specific name called quotient. And 5 is called the dividend. And 3 is called the divisor. So the remainder, the quotient, the divisor and the dividend play a vital role in getting connected to each other. So each of these have their own properties. But they have their own mathematical relation connected which says that the dividend which is 5 as seen in this example problem clearly is divisor times of quotient which is 1 plus the remainder which is 2. In every division concept it holds true that the dividend is equal to the divisor times the quotient that is 3 times 1 plus the remainder which is 2 because this finally leads to 3 plus 2 which is equal to 5 which equals the dividend is how we understand therefore the divisibility property says if a number a is divided by b that implies the dividend which is a is divisor times the quotient plus the remainder is how we understand the divisibility property. Dividend is divisor into quotient plus remainder. Dividend is A and divider, divisor is B is how we get. And more importantly, the remainder always lies and it is less than divisor is very important property which gets connected through this dividend is divisor into quotient plus remainder and the remainder can never exit divisor and it is always positive so zero less than or equal to remainder less than divisor is how we understand the divisibility properties connecting the divisor the dividend the quotient and the remainder now the divisibility properties let's connect with polynomials. So this session is about connecting the divisibility properties as learned in the session with polynomials. What happens when we divide a polynomial with the other polynomial? If it is numbers, we have the concept through numbers, but if it is polynomials, we have the same concept as learned through polynomials. So today's session is about divisibility properties connected with polynomials. So let's see how we get the divisibility property through the polynomials. Say for example, I have p of x when divided with q of x, the quotient f of x divided by g of x, the quotient is say q of x and the remainder is r of x that is when I divide g of x polynomial with the function f of x then I get my quotient which is q of x and then I get my r of x which is the remainder is how we understand the divisibility connected with polynomials and interestingly here <coughs> the property says dividend is divisor into quotient plus remainder therefore 
using this divisibility property which is called division algorithm let's try to see how the polynomials get connected respectively dividend in this case being the polynomial which is being divided is equal to the polynomial which gets divided into q of x plus r of x is how we understand provided with the condition that 0 less than or equal to the remainder less than the divisor which is g of x is how we understand the division algorithm for the polynomials f of x by g of x or f of x divided by g of x divisibility properties connected with polynomials f of x and g of x if you like this video please give a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on cbsc syllabus